Hello, virtual viewers. Kevin Lachlan's my name, and a discussion of Rowhammer is today's talk's aim. Our paper is entitled Stop, Hammer Time, and we thought it'd be sweet if our whole talk did rhyme. To understand the title, if our joke you did miss, listen to MC Hammer's You Can't Touch This. On that note, I suppose a rap could have been cool, but it was not to be due to copyright rules. Anywho, I digress. Let's talk about DRAM and how access patterns make memory get real wind. Each cell stores a bit, encoded as charge, in banks, rows, and columns, much data v large. Over time cells lose charge, so by rows we refresh to retain data values at every address. DRAM is liked for its density and cost, but more density means data might just get lost. You see, density goes up for cost and efficiency, but ends up yielding an increasing deficiency. Special access patterns can be exploited to cause disturbances in DRAM, which give us much pause. These Rohammer attacks exploit interference among proximate rows to flip bits without clearance. To read or write cells not in a bank's buffer, we must activate the row once forth DRAM can suffer. If aggressor rows see too many acts, their neighboring victims will likely get whacked. By whacked, we mean hammered. Victims' rows bits might flip, if the victims aren't refreshed before the hammer hits. Worse, newer DRAM sees a worrying trend, where fewer acts yield, more victims' lives end. Yes, this risk of disturbance is a worsening sensation yielding data loss, machine failure, even privilege escalation. DRAM vendors claim the problem was fixed, but recent work shows that they're full of it. Other hardware defenses show it's costly to scale, leading experts to sing of a different tale. Perhaps software can help, recent work does a test, full system support would really be best. But software defenses yield incomplete protection due to lack of support from the hardware dimension. If you don't even know which rows received acts, preventing bit flips is a rather tough task. While with software alone, we might not be so fine, we'd do well to have a hardware software co-design. Software allows us to adapt and to scale, while hardware primitives help mitigations prevail. But since DRAM vendors have shown years of unwillingness, we turn to CPU vendors to help end the silliness. Rather than DRAM serving as some sort of patroller, we derive support from the memory controller. Compared to DRAM, where much is a black box, the CPU's mem controller uses far fewer padlocks. Given this insight, we do now describe how our hardware primitives and software can jive to help solve Rohammer to let us all live in glee using our novel defense taxonomy. First up, there's isolation-centric defenses, where space is the name of the game of protection. To corrupt chosen victims, the adversary needs some aggressor rows found in proximity. Accordingly such, these defenses do say, why don't we just take the proximity away? Software defenses map rows from two contexts to faraway lands, like banks, as a concept. Alas, such isolation is tough to achieve, on modern-day servers which do much interleave. Memory controllers spread context cross banks for parallel access and performance gains. The bottom line is turning interleaving off is not the best option due to the perf loss. Our motto instead is, our claim we insist, bank interleaving, context isolation, coexist. Note within each bank are many subarrays that provide isolation in similar ways. Thus, we propose we should, in this case, interleave banks but give subarrays space. We thereby retain the performance gain and provide isolation that keeps us all sane. And while subarray mappings are not directly exposed, they can be inferred by prior methods proposed. Given such mappings, a system astute could map two VMs to different subarray groups and therefore prevent inter-VM attacks, gaining some confidence in security back. 
Our next class of defenses focus on the aggressors. The rows activated, the memory stressors. Since bit flips occur when rows see acts too much, these defenses limit acts, thereby coming in clutch. The limit these days for software to help is that precise act info don't come off the shelf. Hardware can interrupt when an act count is reached, but provides no info on the source of the breach. Therefore, we argue, we must augment this interrupt to report an aggressor before memories corrupt. To be more precise, we report the row, causing the overflow act count to show. The host OS can then use this information to limit the acts at this aggressor location. For instance, row remapping could provide such correction, while random remaps prevent avoiding detection. Our final class of defenses focus on the refresh of potential victim rows before attacks have success. Recall that a refresh recharges a row, maintaining integrity and thus the status quo. The problem in this case is software cannot directly refresh to foil the plot. Instead, software must use instructions indirect, inefficient and potentially unreliable at best. A series of flushes, a string of mem fences, with few guarantees an attack is prevented. As such, we propose a refresh instruction to let software help avoid row destruction. The instruction will take a victim address where the mem controller will ensure a victim refresh. If future DRAM would help with this labor, it could provide a command to refresh a row's neighbor. Yes, if DRAM vendors are not so complacent, we won't have to infer which rows are adjacent. So there you have it, our proposed primitives, and corresponding defenses, their derivative. Note we've assumed that the host OS is trusted, but in Enclave models, this assumption is busted. By example we give, there's Intel SGX, where the host OS is considered a threat. In such situations, whether bit flips bring mayhem depends on if checks are used to restrain them. If the Enclave checks integrity of the memory upon access, it will simply shut down due to bit flips at the address. Because with this memory, the host can already tamper, enclaves don't usually provide more handlers. Without such protection, we must prevent or detect bit flips to ensure mem secure and correct. In the paper, we discuss system needs and provide more details, so give it a read. In conclusion today, we would like to note, Rohammer support should come from both the CPU and DRAM who must answer the call to help solve Rohammer once and for all. And finally, because I know that it's simply proper, I'd like to thank my lovely co-authors. First we have Stefan, last name Soroyu. He's concerned that Rohammer just might destroy you. Next we have Woolman, whose first name is Alec. On screen his name is in Garamund italics. Last we have Burish, last name Kashikcha. Don't worry, Burish. I wouldn't forget ya.